Hello dear viewers, welcome to your favorite channel Ogan Babu. Today we are going to observe how to provide anesthesia for severe aortic stenosis. You are seeing metazolam and levetalol which I use in this case on top of usual anesthetic drugs that I use regularly exercise in the OT. Normally area of aortic valve is 2.5 to 3.5 cm square. When it is less than 1 cm square, we call it severe aortic stenosis. When aortic orifice is reduced to 0.5 to 0.7 cm square, it is called critical aortic stenosis. With this degree of stenosis, mean transvalvular pressure gradient is approximately 50 mm of mercury at rest and patient is unable to increase cardiac output in response to exhaustion. In our case, there is 55 mm of mercury mean transvalvular pressure gradient. But thankfully, patient doesn't have triad of heart failure, angina and syncope, which is seen in end-stage advanced aortic stenosis. This patient is presented with acute appendicitis and the surgery is laparoscopic appendicectomy. You all have already seen that the surgeons have performed all the laparoscopic ports and we are seeing inflamed appendix in the monitor. Aortic stenosis is usually caused by calcification of valve due to aging, congenital bicuspid valve, sometimes due to rheumatic fever. Rheumatic aortic stenosis is usually associated with aortic regurgitation. In our case, there is grade 2 aortic regurgitation. Usually, this patient presented with hypertension and left ventricular hypertrophy, which is applicable for our patient also. Maintenance of normal sinus rhythm, heart rate, vascular resistance, and intravascular volume is very important for severe aortic stenosis. So, I try to keep the heart rate between 60 to 90 beat per minute and avoid tachycardia and pericardia. Sinus rhythm is very important as ventricular filling is mostly dependent on atrial contraction. So I always look for P wave in lead to ECG tracing in the monitor to prevent extreme vasodilation and maintaining a normal vascular resistance. I reduce dose of propofol and add midazolam 2 mg for co-induction with other regularly used drugs such as fentanyl, saxamethonium, glycopylurate. I avoid atropine to prevent tachycardia, rather use 10 mg of levetalol immediately after induction. Viewers, you all are seeing the heart rate and NIVP is within normal limit and presence of P wave in cardiac monitor. For maintaining intravascular volume I use 5% DNS in this case postoperative pain I use paracetamol 1 mg ketorolac 30 mg empirically in this operation there is reduction of heart rate gradually after giving levetalol yes it is now 87 then 86 and 85 now it is uh, 84 and lastly 83 isoprorin 1.5 percent is used as inhalational anesthetic agent for maintenance of anesthesia oxygen and nitrous oxide ratio is 1 is to 2 in this case patient is on intermittent positive pressure ventilation with ventilatory rate of 12 breath per minute and tidal volume 450 milli ml with no p there is no incidence of rise of peak airway pressure despite patient is in tendril and bar position highest peak airway pressure was 22 centimeter of water IE ratio is 1 is to 2 etco2 and spo2 is always within normal limit Atracurium is given incrementally for muscle relaxation. Now surgeons are dissecting the inflamed appendix from surrounding tissue and cecum as there is some inflammation 
it is hard to remove the appendix from the surrounding tissue. So surgeon requires some time and they use dathami for that. And uh, I have prepared reversal mixture by using 2.5 milligram of neostigmine and 0.4 milligram of glycofibrate. Yes, appendix is dissected from cecum and knots are fixed. Now surgeons bring out the inflamed appendix from abdomen through the laparoscopic ports. We are seeing the inflamed appendix outside of abdomen. Almost all the intraoperative period is eventless. Now we are putting suction tube in the oral cavity of patient to wash out any secretion. Yes, patient is started to effort for breathing and we are now ready for extubation. After giving reversal mixture, it is now good time for extubation. And now we prepare for extubation and we extubate the patient now. After extubation, we will suction the oral cavity for any other secretion possibly present in the oral cavity to be sure which may cause laryngospasm. After extubation, we oxygenate the patient by using face mask to prevent hypoxia and hypercarpia. At last, patient is communicating with us verbally opens his eye and shows his tongue and that's all for today thank you all goodbye